Currently, we have these two platforms that fall off the screen. I'm sure you would like the ground in your game to stay fixed on the screen, to stay still, not to fall in this manner. We can easily do that by accessing the physical body of our ground. So I'm going to take the first ground that I defined, which is the one that goes on the bottom, and I'm going to access its physical body and then a property named allow gravity. You can set this to false and then the platform will no longer be affected by gravity. So basically we are disabling, disabling gravity. Now, what if I would, what if I want the two blocks to collide with each other? I would like the, the block on the top to be stopped by the block at the bottom. The first step in order to achieve that will be to add a physics collider between those two objects. So we're going to add collision detection here. This.physics.add.collider gives me a method that, that I can use for that purpose. And I can pass here two sprites, or it could be a sprite and a group of sprites, or it could be two different groups. So I'm going to pass on the, the ground and ground two. And that will make both of those sprites, they will make it so that they collide with each other. They both need to be physically enabled, of course, for this to work. So as you can see, they collide with each other, but something else happens. And that is that the top block gives its momentum to the bottom block and they, they both move down. What if I want the bottom block to stay still? Well, we can go and make it immovable so that it doesn't it doesn't take the momentum of another object so we can actually do that for the first one of the of the grounds so ground whoops ground dot body dot immovable and we can set this to true and now they will be it will be stopped now our ground Sometimes you might have things that you that you want to make immovable, but you might want to move them like manually. For example, you could have a platform that moves up and down, up and down. So you don't want that platform obviously to be influenced by the momentum of another object. However, you are moving that. When you are not going to move something at all, like the ground here, I'm not going to move that at all during the game. I can actually set it up as a static sprite instead of a as a static body instead of a dynamic body when we add when we added this sprite as um, to the physics system there is a second parameter here that is optional and that is false by default the false value means that we are passing on a dynamic body and a dynamic body is a body that will move that will respond to forces but if you want your body to be static and that means it will not respond to any forces. You can set this to true. And once you've set that to true, you no longer need to add any of these things. As you will see, when the body is static, it is not going to move um, ever again. And you can see that the, the boundary here is now blue as opposed to pink. If you want to know a little bit more about the difference between a static and a dynamic, um, physical body, what you can do is bring this to the console. So we're going to do a console log ground and we are going to do the same thing for the dynamic one so that you can spot some of the differences. So I'm going to refresh that and I'm going to uh, increase the size of the console. So the first one here is the static body. So first thing that's different is that when you go to body, it now says static body, whereas the other one, if you go to body on this one, it will say just body. The properties here when you expand are going to be a lot less than those of the dynamic body. For example, um, I don't see any acceleration properties here. Let's go and check out the other one. It has, um, it has the gravity, it has uh, angular acceleration. So it has a lot more, a lot more properties and why would you want to set something to static? Well, you do it in order to for performance reasons, because 
you don't want phaser to be trying to calculate forces and things like that when it's not really necessary and then you can just have less properties altogether. So for our game, we'll be using static objects for all of the ground and the platforms. And we'll be using dynamic objects for the, the player for and for the items that move or items that we may want to move or that might, might be uh, something that you might want to move at one point. Um, so that is the difference between those two types of physical bodies. Now, besides the ground here, I actually going to uh, make some changes and I'm going to place the, the ground in its final position and then I'm going to add another platform. So I'm going to get rid of ground too. If you want to keep any of these uh, or any of these notes, um, I will keep this as a comment in this lesson, but uh, it will be gone in the next lesson. So you can keep it if you if you want to have that for some reference for your own game or for some other idea. Okay, so I'm going to begin by positioning the ground somewhere else. I'm going to position it in 604. I think that will give it the position that I want. Yes, and now. I'm also going to go and add a platform here. And the, for the platform, let me show you. We have already a, we have a sprite that that has a full platform, but I want to create platforms of different length, of different sizes, of different lengths. So I have this other sprite here, which is called block, and that is just a single a single element of a platform. So I want to create platforms of say I don't know three or five different different blocks. Um, so therefore I'm gonna be using the the block one instead of the of the platform file. So after creating my ground, I'm going to go and create a platform. And this instead of being a, a normal sprite, this is going to be called a tile sprite. A tile sprite is a sprite where you repeat the same texture multiple times. Then for the for the location of this I'm going to also place it in the middle of the of the screen and I'm going to place it a little bit higher up which means a smaller y value so let's say let's say 500 and this will be the uh, block and we also need to give it the width and the height so the width actually goes here and the height goes here so that is a different from the normal sprite in the normal sprite the width and the height are that of the file, of the image file. Whereas here, we have to manually give that so that it will know how many times it needs to repeat the texture. Um, the texture that I'm going to use is 36, has a width of 36 and a height of 30. So if I want, let's say, only if I want a platform of three blocks, I have to do three times 36. And I want a platform of just one uh, one block tall, so I'm just going to add it like so. This is only to make it explicit. Now you could, of course, um, do this in a in a. You could add this as as parameters or as variables, but I'm just going to do it like this to show you how to create one. So now let's see if we get that. Yep. So we got that one that has three, and so you could increase that to four, for instance, and have a bit of a bigger platform there. Great. Now that is just um, a sprite, a tile sprite, but it doesn't have physics. So we need to follow the same approach in order to give it a physical body. And then it will have a physical body and it will be static as well because we are not going to have it moving. So let's um, keep this a little bit more brief. This is the ground and platform. Okay. So with that, we've got our platform and the and the platform, as you can see, now has the corresponding static um, boundary line. And I also want to be able to add the player. So we're going to add the player here. And we're going to save this player in the in the look in the context so that we can access the player from different methods. As you can imagine, the player will be quite an important object in this game. So this will be this dot add dot sprite and we will position it somewhere here so that it falls so i'm going to position it in the middle as well but 400 and it will be player now which um, which frame do i do i want to use for my player remember that our player is a sprite sheet if i don't enter any frame which is what i've just done 
it will show frame 0, but I would like to have frame this is 0, 1, 2, 3. I'd like to have frame number 3 as the, as the initial one, so I'm going to add 3 there. And you can see now that it's a correct frame. And I'm going to also give this player a physical body. However, in this case, it will be a dynamic body. So I'm not going to add a parameter. I'm not going to add false because that's the default value. So I'm just going to leave it like so. And as you can probably imagine, the player falls through the, the different elements. So we could go and add collision between the player and say the ground and the player and say the platform, but there is a better way of doing it, right? So let's Let's start by just by doing that so that we get that part right. You don't want to be adding every single element because if we add 100 different platforms, we're going to have to add 100 different lines. Instead, what we will be using is a group. So we can go here and create a group. So let's call this group platforms. And this will be this.add.group. And we can go and we can include um, both of our elements into our newly created group. So basically, we let's let's actually add this at the beginning, and then we can easily just do this dot platforms dot add and uh, add the corresponding element here. So that would be ground, and we are going to do the same thing for the platform. So platform here. And lastly, when it comes to collision, we're going to add our whole group instead of just the ground. So now, whoops, there's some, some error here. Let's go and see what we did wrong. Oh, so I am missing a T over there. It is platforms. So my bad for that. Now let's try again. And yeah, we got it working now. Um, and we are using a, a whole group for that. Um, that is the the basics here when it comes to to making elements in your level that are going to be fixed, that are not going to be moving. You also know how to disable gravity if you want to to, to have a dynamic body that just doesn't have gravity, uh, or if you want to have a dynamic body that is that is not going to be moved when you pass on momentum to it. And momentum, by the way, is um, mass times velocity. So if you go really quickly over to something, you are passing in a lot of momentum, or if you put in something very heavy as well, and the mass can be actually added in the physical body. So there's a property there called called mass. Um, but if you don't want to have momentum at all, you can disable it in this manner. In our case, uh, I decided to make them all static because I, those are things that they uh, they will not move at all during the game. So it just saves us having to have all these variables and all these methods that we're not using. So it's for performance reasons. And also Phaser, when it does it, the physical calculations, it treats static objects separately. There's a separate array uh, or a tree, like a data structure just for those. So that's the way to do it if you are not going to be moving those things. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.